name is Paige. I'm a 25-year-old office employee. One year ago, I got married to my husband, Adam, who is three years older than me, and I lived together with Adam and his mother, Karen. I was worried about living together with his mother, but my mother-in-law said that when we have children, she would quit her part-time job and help us to raise our child and that she was really excited about it. That was comforting. However, because we were having difficulty becoming pregnant with a child, even though my mother-in-law was really kind when we first got married, her attitude slowly but surely started to change towards me. Every single time we would be out and she would see other children, she would let out a massive sigh and then she would start putting on a lot of non-verbal pressure on me. Even when we would go home and watch TV, she would just sigh over and over again. Ugh. There, here we go again. The moment that a cute child came out on a TV commercial, she looks over at me and sighs. I wonder if the day will ever come that a child's voice is going to echo in this house. What? Usually my mother-in-law only applies pressure to me through her size, but this time she added a few words to it. Mom, I told you not to apply any pressure on Paige. Because I want to see my grandchild's face soon. Yeah, if I could see my child's face, I'd love to as well. However, it's not like I was going to be able to get pregnant just because my mother-in-law sighs and says she wants a grandchild. Well, we also feel the same way. That's why we already have plans to go get infertility tests done at the clinic. That's right. Next week, we had plans to go and speak with a doctor at the fertility clinic. We weren't going to tell my mother-in-law about this, but I think my husband didn't want to hear his mother sigh anymore, and so he let it slip. What do you mean, we? Is there any need for you to get tested as well, Adam? Yeah, this is the pattern where she only believes that the woman is the reason for the infertility. There's a possibility that the infertility could be my fault. All right, fine. When you get the results, make sure you tell me. I really want to see my grandchild as soon as possible. It's my dream to quit my job and take care of my grandchild. It's not like I don't understand my mother-in-law. Wanting to rush and see her first grandchild, but my husband and I also felt the same way. My husband said that if either one of us is infertile, then let's go to the infertility treatment together. And even if it doesn't work, then he said we could still enjoy our lives together as husband and wife. My husband was on my side, so everything was going to be fine. That's what I believed. Two months later. As a result of the test at the clinic, we found out that the infertility lied with me. They said that the possibility for me to get naturally pregnant was close to zero. However, through fertility treatments, the possibility wouldn't be a complete zero. After we received the results, I told my husband that I wanted to do the infertility treatments. However, when I did, the most unimaginable words came out of my husband's mouth. Does that mean that I'm not infertile? Huh? Why does he seem happy? Yeah, apparently your results came back normal. But I'm gonna do my best with the infertility treatment. I see. So the reason why we weren't able to have kids was your fault after all. What? What do you mean, after all? From that day, my husband stopped saying anything about his mother's giant size or pressure to have kids. Not only that, but my husband was starting to sigh along with her. One month later, when I came home from work that day, I noticed that at the front door there were multiple cardboard boxes and bags. Not only that, but those bags were my travel bags. Which must mean that inside of these cardboard boxes... As I was thinking that, my mother-in-law realized that I had just gotten home and she showed up at the front door. Oh, that grinning face! Even the most clueless person could easily imagine what was about to happen. Ma'am, these cardboard boxes... Could it be that you ordered a little bit too much for a delivery by mistake? Even though I knew that it wasn't the case, I knew that the possibility wasn't, so I had to ask. This is all of your stuff, I packed it up for you. I knew it! At that moment, Adam also came home. Even though previously my husband was on my side. Hmm? Oh, you're still here. I would have thought that you left a long time ago by now. Based on his attitude recently, it was a given that he was going to team up with his mother. But still, I didn't think that they were going to suddenly kick me out of the house. 
We should have made you get tested before you got married. Oh, I wish you could give back the one year Adam wasted with you. It's not just one year. If you included the time that we dated, I've wasted three years. W wasted Are you saying that the three years spent with me were a waste? Uh, hey, wait a minute, Adam! You were the one that said if either of us were infertile that we would go through treatment together! That was only if I was the reason for the infertility. And fertility treatment costs a lot of money. And if you were to ask me if I want your child that badly with that much money... Honestly... Not really. N no way! Even though I wanted to spend my retirement looking after my grandchild and relaxing, if you're going to have to waste your household finances for infertility treatment, then I wouldn't have been able to quit my part-time job! This was all too much and I was at a loss for words. I'm really so glad that I wasn't the one who was infertile. Anyway, infertility is a perfect reason to get a divorce. So goodbye! Huh? Wh wait You can't suddenly say divorce! The moment you found out that you were infertile, Normally, you should be the one to say that you'll back down and suggest the divorce. B -b because you said we would do the treatment together! My goodness, you truly are such a self-centered wife. After stealing Adam's precious time and you're acting like everything's okay, who do you think you are? You're an infertile wife, now get out! N no way! And plus, it's going to be difficult for you to live with us when we want kids this bad. We're saying this for your sake, Paige. My sake! Even though he said that we were in this together, and if we can't have children that the two of us can enjoy our lives together... Our lives as a couple together circled my brain, but my kind husband was never going to come back. I realized that my kind husband was never there to begin with, and I couldn't stop the tears that were overflowing out of my eyes. Alright then, I'll leave. I grabbed a small bag with the necessities and left the house and I arrived at a business hotel nearby. I couldn't believe that my married life was over just like that and I sobbed all throughout the night into the morning. But at the same time, along with my tears, my feeling of shock also washed away. Divorce just because we can't have children? Any man with such a small heart, I don't want anyway! Just as they want, I will get a divorce but I will need to make sure that they pay the full price for that. For a while, I decided not to answer the divorce. Even though I didn't have a millimeter of affection towards Adam anymore, I pretended like I was still in love with Adam and I dragged it out. That's because I knew that my mother-in-law wanted us to get a divorce because she wanted to Adam to hurry up and get remarried and have her children. I agreed to the divorce under the condition that I would be receiving a payout for it, and then I was able to start my, my new life. Three years later. After my divorce, I changed my job and where I lived. And right now I'm in the midst of enjoying my own life. Then one day on the weekend, I was sitting on the terrace of a cafe relaxing by myself when I heard a voice that was about to shatter my relaxed mood. Hey, isn't that you, Paige? And that voice was the voice of my ex-husband Adam who had kicked me out three years ago. Not only that, but my ex-mother-in-law was also with him. You poor thing, drinking a coffee all by yourself in a place like this. Excuse me, by the way, what I'm drinking isn't coffee, it's hot cocoa. After all, when I told you we were getting a divorce, you were sobbing, saying that you didn't want to break up with me. That's true. In order to make sure I received everything that I needed to, I put on my framed act. Yeah, I do remember that. I was starting to feel nostalgic about being an actress three years ago. What? Wait a minute, wait a minute! Wow! You're still wearing your wedding ring to me? I can't believe you're still not over it! What? Suddenly, Adam pointed at the ring that was shining on my ring finger and he started to crack up. Oh dear! So that means you're just sitting here sadly drinking a coffee because you couldn't forget about Adam? Like I said, it's a hot cocoa! Hey, I hope you don't think that it's fate that you're reunited with me like this. <laughs> Excuse me? However, perhaps it was fate that we were reunited like this, right now. Secretly, I may have been hoping for this reunion. That's why I decided to hop on board right with this luck. In my own way. <laughs> You're right, when you suddenly hit me with divorce, I was really shocked. And the feeling of betrayal was so strong. 
So you're saying that you still think about me? My goodness, his positivity is almost impressive. I honestly thought that I would be able to get rid of my memories of you too, but perhaps deep down somewhere inside I was actually hoping to be reunited. I always felt like I needed to see you again, and thank you. Thank us? That's right! The moment that you found out that I was infertile, you showed me your true nature and asked for a divorce, so thank you. What? To your mother, who was always pressuring me about grandchildren and always doing such fake, heavy sighs just in case you were the one that was infertile, you were pretending to be an understanding husband and setting up a defense strategy for yourself. At the moment that you found out the infertility didn't lie with you, you changed your attitude completely, and I'm so glad that I was able to cut off all ties with such a fake family like that. What did you say? My goodness, I can't believe you even thought of yourself as a wife when you can't have children. My goodness, well, three years ago, I've already graduated from being a wife to this family, so I wasn't expected to be called that again. Adam, you made the right call divorcing a woman like this. Yeah, it's exactly as you said, Mom. Truly, it was the best decision to get a divorce. Because the divorce became the reason I got a new job. I'm working as a secretary at a law agency, and so my annual salary is three times what it was three years ago. And now I am receiving three times the salary that I was before. I'm also going to school, and I'm able to have my goal of becoming a lawyer. Thanks to the divorce, my life is super fulfilling, so thanks for divorcing me back then, and not only that, with the added bonus of the payout. <laughs> what? I... Lawyer? S salary Three times? And once I become a lawyer... I'm sure it's only going to increase more! Ah, oh, I'm so glad that I was able to thank you for the divorce. Because I was able to see the two of them shocked like this. I knew that the biggest revenge I could get on the two of them was for me to become super duper happy. That's why I wanted to shove in their faces just how happy and satisfying my life was now. Perhaps that's how I felt somewhere deep down inside. And so being reunited with them like this was fate. I'm sure this made up for all those tears three years ago. Th that's amazing. Thanks. Th that's right. In that case, I'll let you get remarried to Adam. Excuse me? Good point. <laughs> now that I think about it, if you can't have children, then that means that you can just keep working. After I left you, I bet that work was the only thing you had to live for. Even though the pain might have eased, I bet you weren't able to feel the sadness in your heart. <laughs> Drinking a coffee, sad and lonely by yourself in a place like this. I can't just stand by and watch as your ex-husband. Let's live together again. The three of us. Like I said, it's hot cuckoo! But also, they changed their tune so quickly that I was shocked. Seriously, I truly felt all over again that it was the right decision to get divorced from this guy. And look at you. You still miss me, don't you? I mean, look at her. Even after the divorce, she's still wearing the ring. What? Oh, you're talking about this? I lifted up my hand and kindly showed the ring that was shining on my finger. This ring is my treasure. Well, because it's matching with me. What are you saying? Matching with you? After we got divorced, it looks like your vision has gotten even worse. What? Why don't you take a closer look? Are you telling me that this is the same wedding ring? And then I stuck out the precious ring on my finger in front of Adam. What? No matter how you look at it, it's obviously the ring that you and I- Excuse me? When are you saying that you actually gifted me a real Tiffany ring? The day our divorce went through, I sent my ring with you off to the pawn shop and it only amounted to two dollars. What? Two- Two dollars?! If the ring was fake, then I guess it means your love was fake too. The three of us live together, what a joke! If I had to live with you too, I would be much better off sleeping on a park bench. What did you say? What a rude daughter-in-law! Like I said, I'm not your daughter-in-law. What the hell? You're drinking coffee sadly by yourself, and we felt bad for you, and that's why we spoke to you. You know, infertile women are trash when it comes to marriage requirements. That's right. All of the leftovers of the marriage agencies are women 30 years and older, are women who don't want children, and you are a leftover, and Adam is saying that he'll take you back, so you should just be grateful and accept it. Definitely not. What did you say? I'm telling you that I'll make you my wife! And why are you also denying me? Also, interesting, I see. 
Looks like these guys, even if you want to get remarried, he hasn't been able to and they're panicking more. In that case, why don't I have a little bit more fun? <laughs> oh dear, it looks like you're the one that has regrets. Huh? Even though you said once that you got divorced from me, you were going to get remarried to a woman that could have children, and yet you're still single. That's proof that you still have regrets over me. Why don't I set a little light to the fire? Excuse me? I don't have any regrets. I'm the one who threw you away. As if I would have any regrets. Who knows about that? What a rude daughter-in-law! From the very next day that he got a divorce, he submitted to the marriage agencies, and he's been looking for a partner. It's just that there aren't any women who are worthy of Adam. That's right. All of these marriage agencies are useless, and I'm just irritated with them. They tell me that I need to lower my standards. And even when I lower my standards, all the women are always complaining and things don't progress! None of the women in the marriage agencies seem to recognize my attractiveness, and it's their fault for all being so clueless! We've submitted to, like, four marriage agencies. There's obviously no way that there are any regrets about you. Don't get carried away! Oh dear, so sorry. I didn't know that you were failing so much through marriage agencies. How sad that they were jumping from marriage agency to agency. We're not failing! It's just that we haven't been able to meet a decent marriage agency yet! That's right! A woman in her 20s without any prior marriages, an annual income of at least $40,000, and a woman who agrees to continue working even after you got married. There should be plenty of those around, and yet it's their fault for not introducing us to any. If Adam gets married too quickly, then they won't be able to take more money from us, so they're just messing around. Wow, how positive. And plus, even though I say that I want kids, everybody is hiding their own fertility when they meet with me! That's right! The moment we tell them to go get tested, they all know that their lives are going to be exposed and they run away! Huh? You're telling them at the marriage agency to get tested? That's crazy. Maybe there aren't any women in this world who are worthy of me. You're right! Maybe there aren't any women for you, insisting on living with your mother after getting married, forcing them to do all the chores, to work, and to raise a child, and you're looking for a woman in their 20s who's never been married before to match with a 30-year-old once-divorced man? And not only that, but before you even start dating, you're forcing them to take an infertility test? What? What's so wrong with that? Obviously, obviously everything is wrong with that, you idiot! Uh? A marriage is for two people to support each other throughout their lives. Even if you can't have children, you're supposed to make somebody that you would still want to continue to support for the rest of your life as their partner. I don't think there's any women in this world who would want to be with a man who just thinks of a wife as a stepping stone for you and your mother's happiness and comfort. Stop underestimating what a marriage is. What? What, what did you say? Even though you were crying when I left you? That's right! And we're offering to take a sad woman who's drinking a coffee by herself! How grateful can you be? At that moment, in perfect timing, we heard the tars of a car pull up. When I looked in the direction of a car, I saw a man waving his hand at me through the window of a Mercedes Benz. And on that man's ring finger was a sparkling ring! Hey Paige! Sorry to keep you waiting! What? Wait a minute. Oh dear, looks like my husband's here. Oh, <gasps> Husband? Once again, I placed my ring in a place where Adam and his mother could clearly see it. I told you, didn't I? This was a precious ring! What the? That guy! Paige, you... what? I thought that we might get into disagreements about the divorce, and so when I was looking for a lawyer, I ran into him who was my classmate from elementary school, and he was a lawyer. In the end, we were able to settle it without the need for a lawyer, but after that faithful reunion, we fell in love. And he even introduced me to my new job, which brings me to now. Really, the divorce led me to my soulmate, and so I'm grateful to the two of you. Thank you for divorcing me. No. No way! I got up quickly and jumped into the car that my husband was driving. Adam stood there in shock, but my ex-mother-in-law started storming towards the driver's seat. Yeah, you know this woman is infertile. She's not able to have kids. You're being fooled! Well, thank you for that. But I'm already aware that my wife is infertile. What? I married Paige because I love her. Even if we can't have children, as long as Paige is by my side, then that's all I need. So, 
for giving me the opportunity to be reunited with my wife. I'm grateful to the two of you. Thank you for freeing such a wonderful person. No, no way! Paige, can I start driving? Oh wait, there's one more thing I definitely have to tell them. What? By the way, I wasn't drinking coffee. That was a hot cocoa. What? Oh, I feel so much better. Well then, let's go. All right, all right. <laughs> what? What was that? How dare you find happiness without us? My ex-mother-in-law's screaming was covered up by the sound of the engine driving away. After that, apparently, my ex-husband completely gave up on getting remarried, and that's because he went into debt to submit to all of these marriage agencies and he wasn't able to get a girlfriend out of it, and so he got pissed off and threw a tantrum at the marriage agency. In the end, he was forced to withdraw his membership, and in order to pay back the debt, they both had to work from day to night. So they didn't even have time to look for a new wife. On the other hand, I am living an extremely happy new life. Hey, Thomas, are you sure you don't want to think about wanting kids? Thomas proposed to me knowing that I was infertile, but deep down inside, I was worried about it. It's not that I don't want kids. Sometimes, I think about how cute our child would be together. But I would get jealous if our child took away all of your attention. So maybe it's better for it to be just the two of us. I'm with you, Paige, because I want to be with you. Is that how you feel? Thomas! Me too! I love you, Thomas! <laughs> Even though we may not be able to have children, I truly feel that this time, I'll be able to live happily ever after with my husband. <laughs> Thank you for watching! What kind of crazy people will we get to see next? Stay tuned for more!